The entrance of gilts in a farm has been, and it is still today, one of the main causes of destabilization of the PERS status and a source of entrance of new PERS virus strains, heterologous strains, in farms. Therefore, it is crucial to check and ensure that protocols of entering future breeding sows are being performed correctly to succeed in the fight against disease. The entrance of every single batch of gilts pursued two objectives. On the one hand, performing good quarantine protocol is needed to ensure that new arriving gilts are not going to introduce new heterologous strains. On the other hand, performing good acclimatization protocol prior service is basic to ensure that gilts are well immunized and without shedding PERS virus. Monitoring all the process is essential in order to reach the objectives. Quarantine is a facility separated from the production area, ideally off-farm, where animals are kept isolated without any direct or indirect contact with the other animals. The objective is to guarantee that there is no transmission of pathogens from the new animals to the animals already present in the farm and vice versa. During this phase, different tests are performed to make sure that pathogens don't enter. The animal's acclimatization process begins immediately afterwards and the main objective is to induce immunity against PERS to the future breeders. Focusing on the acclimatization process, there are two different and widely used strategies. On the one hand, we can use PERS-modified live virus vaccines. The vaccination protocol is usually two doses before the first insemination, both of them separated by three or four weeks, although some vaccines have demonstrated efficacy with a single dose prior to mating. On the other hand, direct exposure to the wild virus. The purpose of this practice is to develop comprehensive homologous protection from the farm strain. Although recent studies have demonstrated that occasionally some heterologous strain may induce better protection than the homologous one. Generally speaking, three different methods are used to perform this infection. Inoculation of serums of animals that were in the viremia phase at the time of extraction. They can also be brought into contact with animals that are suspected or known to be viremic and are excreting the virus. Another practice is the use of tissues of infected animals containing the virus, the most commonly used tissue being the placenta. These practices may involve a risk, since the infection from other pathogens may be disseminated, provoking the undesired effect. On the other hand, a certain quantity of virus is needed to immunize the animals, and this is much more complicated to guarantee with these techniques. Once we know the different tools that we have to properly immunize gilts, different acclimatization protocol can be applied depending on the status of replacement gilts, ELISA positive or negative to PERS, and if there is virus circulation in the farm of destination. If gilts arrive to the farm PERS negative without any previous contact to the virus, and at the farm of destination the virus is not circulating, we have to vaccinate gilts if the farm is serological positive. If the farm is serological negative, we have just to keep those gilts negative without vaccination. If gilts arrive negative to PERS, and at the farm of destination the virus is circulating, we have to vaccine gilts and then expose animals to the virus strain of the farm. Prior to introducing animals to the breeding herd, we must ensure that there are no viremic and no excreting animals. If gilts have been in contact with the strain which is circulating in the farm, homologous strain, and so that they are PERS positive, firstly, we have to vaccinate the gilts. Then, prior to introducing animals to the breeding herd, we must ensure that there are no viremic and no excreting animals. In those situations where gilts arrive PERS positive, and we know that they have been in contact with virus that is different from the strain present in the farm, we have to avoid the entrance of these animals. In this kind of situation, there is a high risk of introducing a new strain in the farm, and this could provoke a destabilization of the breeding herd. During the gilt's acclimatization process, we have to know their status both at the time of arrival and when they are introduced into the farm. To accomplish this, we will use serological and PCR techniques. At arrival time and after 15 days, to confirm the expected status of the gilts, we will use serology and PCR. Serological positive gilts indicate that they have been in contact with PERS virus previously. PCR positive gilts indicate that these animals are infected and are currently viremic and that the animals may be disseminating the virus. The ideal situation in all cases is to obtain animals negative to serology and PCR. 
During acclimatization, gilts will be vaccinated. In order to evaluate the immunization process, samples will be taken from the animals to perform ELISA, three or four weeks post-vaccination, in order to confirm that this immunization has actually taken place. One week prior to joining the breeding herd, and for animals positive to serology, the batch of animals will be evaluated using PCR, in order to confirm if there is not viral shedding at this time. If they are PCR positive, replacement animals have to remain in the acclimatization building until it is demonstrated by means of PCR that there is no viral excretion. The whole process described up until now should last at least 8 to 12 weeks in order to obtain a good acclimatization process.